secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I have told you women want to change us. That's what they want. They want to change us. First, they want to have sex with us after they've gauged what potential we have how much money we have, what zip code we live in, what have you. Then they want to get under the hood and start making adjustments. Here is a letter sent to a self-proclaimed dating coach and author of a couple of books I'm not going to give free plugs to. His name is uh, Evan Katz. Or Evan Mark Katz, I guess to differentiate himself from all the other Evan Katzes out there. Here is uh, here is the letter that somebody wrote to his website. Hi, Evan. I have been struggling with the fact that I have a wonderful man in my life who loves me more than I've ever felt loved. But I'm just not satisfied somehow. We have known one another for about 10 years, dating on and off, taking a four-year break at one point. He is very persistent and continues to take me back into his life if I let him. We are compatible on many levels. But there is one thing that continues to turn me off from 10 years ago to now. And that is... His lack of ambition to be successful professionally. I wouldn't be picky about his career field of choice... But at the rate it's going, I'll never see him in a 6 o'clock loosened tie, which is a huge turn on for me. I'm very much that young professional go-getter with the high-stress job, always moving to the next promotion. I'm busy all the time, professionally and personally, because I thrive on feeling accomplished. He... On the other hand, he's satisfied with bringing home an okay paycheck to put food on his table. Not that concerned with finishing college. He's 31. And rarely has anything interesting to talk about outside of us, movies, and other media outlet-driven conversation. A full day of freedom in my life does not revolve around TV. 90% of his would. I can't let go of wishing he were a stronger, more creative, more successful man who I could look to for experienced life advice. Wait a minute. Why would you look to somebody like that for life advice? Ever. Ever. I wish every woman I dated looked like Salma Hayek. It doesn't mean they ever will. 
She says, I'm very independent. Yeah, right. Any time a woman says, I'm very independent, you know what that means. She's very needy. <laughs> but I'd also like to get some reassurance and empathy from a reliable source from time to time. Well, how about you go, like, join a professional organization? How about you uh, talk to your friends? Jesus. She says, I know that's harsh. I would never say those things to him, but it's how I feel. I find the sexiest thing about a man is his intelligence. And no matter if a person is well-read or not, a great deal of intelligence comes from professional life experience. Please tell me I'm being too hard on him and myself. I should be happy to have a man who loves me and who I can trust. Thanks. CJ. Oh, my God. I'm very independent, but <laughs> I want to go to someone for experience. Life advice. I need reassurance. I need empathy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm very independent. Let me tell you how independent I am. I don't trust a woman to understand my business, the complications of my world, the business decisions I have to make every hour of every day, and I'm not exaggerating, every hour of every day. I am not expecting women to understand why when I go on vacation, I call the radio station, I say, here's where I'm going to be in France in case you need me to come in. Like this another 9-11 or something. Uh, you know, it's our vacation. What are you doing? I don't expect women to understand that. They don't. Most of those who do are trying to compensate for the fact that they're fat or fugly. Attractive women don't get it. You know what independence means? It means you live alone. Independence means you don't need to depend on others for advice. You don't need others' opinions. You don't need to ask people if you're doing the right thing. You just simply do. You do. You don't talk about doing. You do. That's an independent person. When I date a woman, I don't particularly care what she does for a living. In fact, I couldn't care less. If they want to tell me up to a point, I will listen. But I don't care. I don't understand what other people do for a living. And frankly, I don't care. If I met a woman who simply had $500,000 put away and was living on it very slowly, that would be fine with me. If I met a woman and she had a job and she was working... And she insisted on blabbing about it a little bit, fine. But I really don't have any empathy. I don't know if things are going to be okay. I don't know if things are going to work out. I don't know if your boss is ever going to understand. Don't even come to me with this stuff. I don't know. I don't care. Fine. Your boss is a jerk. Fine. Nobody understands. Fine. Who cares? If you're independent, why do you care what I think? Who cares? So let's just start with that, sweetheart. You started seeing this guy because the sex was probably pretty good. You were comfortable with him. You knew him. And frankly, your interest in him is to see if you can change him, if you can improve him, if you can slap him around and uh, get, you know, fulfill his potential. I know somebody who, you know, was dating, 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 dating. I was one of the people she dated, 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 dated. She finally met a guy who had been a Catholic priest. He left the priesthood. His resume, blank. His FICO score, zero, zero, zero. The guy lived in a rectory. No job experience, no experience outside of being in the rectory. If you know what I mean, he was deep into the rectory. He came straight from the seminary into the rectory. That's right. 
That's what he did. And, and she is what she told me. She said, he's got a lot of potential. <laughs> he's got a lot of potential. You know, why are you too lazy to find somebody who is what they are? So how about finding somebody who is what they're going to be? Why do you have to be the life coach? Why do you have to be the employment counselor? How come you just can't find the right person? Why is it? Or, by the way, how about you just butt out of what he does for a living? What he does for a living is none of your goddamn business, is it? Tom like is 1-800-5800-TOM. Yo, amigo, come join the party of the year on Cinco de Mayo. Broadcast live from Camacho's in the city of industry. For details, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likey Show. Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That is our telephone number. This is Jack. Oh, the Tom like his show. Hello, Jack. Hey, what's going on? I'm eighteen years old, and uh, my friend just turned me on to you. And uh, your show's great, and I love it. But I've got a few questions. Yes. All right, I'm going off to college, and high school is great. You know, hooking up with women is amazing, and. I was just wondering if there's anything more than this, because, you know, I open up to women because I want a little more or just I want something back, but it always seems to go downhill from there because, you know, you show your politics or, you know, your religion or how you feel, and it just, you know, it, it doesn't seem to work. Right. Well, uh, I tell guys uh, not to reveal any of that stuff, just to hook up. I know. That's the thing, but I'm wondering, is there any more to life than just that? What do you mean, any more to life? Do you ask that question after you eat breakfast? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. That's you do. Know, you say, is there any more to life than, than Kellogg's Corn Flakes? Is there any more to life than a pancake? All right, well, the, there is definitely How about more. when you have lunch? What is the deeper meaning of lunch? Women are definitely not equal to pancakes. Actually, they are. Uh, the fact is that having sex is a bodily function, like going to the bathroom or eating dinner. Most definitely. But, and, uh, and so that well, that's all there is. There doesn't have to be more to it than that. So how do I make the choice of what... Is there anything more to this cup of coffee I'm drinking right now? It's black, it's hot, it's steaming, tastes good. Is there anything more to life than that? So can you tell me, what, like, what were you thinking when you got married? Like, were you thinking this one... I was thinking, one? I yeah, of course I thought that, and I was wrong. I was stupid. All right, well, so... So there's no point of even looking because I was they, honestly I'd like to find someone that like is actually great to talk to, but it doesn't seem to work. Why can't you? Well, well, the point is, why does the, why do you need one stop shopping? Definitely you know, not. when you go shopping, uh, do you do all your shopping at a department store? I never go to the department store. Right. Sometimes you go to Bed Bath and Beyond. Sometimes you go to Best Buy. Sometimes you go to Lamps Plus. Right. So, yeah, so do you ever do you ever go to Lamps Plus and go? But what does this mean? All I get from you is lamps. Plus. So there's there there's just they're just there as objects. Yes. Wow. Why that. why are you worried about that? Um, I don't know. I would, if I'm I definitely plan on having kids because I'd definitely like to raise a child on my own, but I would like their mother to be someone worth, you know, uh, worth a damn. Well, you are too to young, raised. but you are too young. People are not yet formed as adults at 18. You're too young for that. I understand that, but when I'm older, when I have kids, the, should I just be by myself raising them? You certainly can. And, and by the way, as a man, I don't recommend marriage to you. Oh, definitely not. It's definitely a trap. And I'm, But I don't I'm recommend women that. living in your home. So, it, wow. So when I have kids, it should be separate because I've seen people come out of homes that aren't married and it seems to wear us but it's not always like that but well the vast majority of people nowadays come from homes where the parents are not married yeah you will taylor came from a single mother so that shows you how good they are at raising children who did uh, hitler did who hitler hitler came out of a single well, so did uh, bill clinton so what i'm so, i'm so basically after i have kids it's uh what do you do i mean you know seriously 
after you have kids, what do you do seriously? Like what? What do you want to do? I'd like to raise them, and I don't want to have it just me as the the sole benefactor of children. The sole benefactor? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, I I don't want my my children's kid kid's wife sleeping around. You know, it's children's kid's mother. You have no control around. over that. So you're saying I never will? You have you will never have control over another person. Wow. So. Ever, ever, ever. Ever. All right, cool. Um, wow. So when was the last time you got married? Why does it matter? I was just wondering because I've listened to your show for a couple of weeks and uh, you, I mean, uh, no, like really, when was the last time? I'm, I'm not trying to bash you or anything. I'm just Why does it like, matter? Uh, I was just wondering. I'm asking why it matters. Okay, if you tell me why it matters, I'll answer you. My train of thought was that uh, uh, when did you start the show and then when did you get married? Like, when did you turn this around and say, I want to start a show and explain the cruelty of women? Towards the end of my last marriage. When was that? Uh, this version of our show has been on the air since about 1997. Oh, wow. So you're dating now? I'm dating, meaning I'm having sex. Okay, I, I got you. I'm not looking to get married. I'm not looking to have babies. I'm not looking to have anybody live in my home. I don't want women having the key to my home. I don't want them being additional card holders on my American Express card. I don't want them having my ATM card. I don't want their name appearing on my checking account. I don't want their name on the deed to my home. Do you have kids? No. Okay. By design. So do you, do you not desire them at all? No, I do not. Oh, all right. The price is too high. Yeah, that's definitely true. But um, they, you do definitely seek rewards from that. I mean... I well, what say, rewards are those? I mean, just the fact of having kids is a great, I mean, experience. Well, Lee, how did Mrs. I, how did, by, by the way, how did Mrs. Hitler feel about that? I don't know, but I wasn't around then, but I can talk to... Well, how do you think she might How do you think she kids. might have felt about it? Um... I have no idea. How about know? Saddam's mom, Mrs. Hussein? How do you think she uh, felt about it? She probably feels terrible right now if she's still alive. I'm right. Not sure. Right. But um, if you count, you, uh, if you produce a great individual, it goes into. Society. If you do, but uh, everyone is like you. They've all got the ego to think they're going to produce the good ones. Well, I'm not saying that I definitely will, but it's definitely a hope. You gotta, you gotta try. I mean, it's not like you no, you don't have both. to try. You don't have to. Wow. You don't have to. In fact, my life is great today, and I don't want it to change. Why would I want it to change? I am very satisfied with my life the way it is. Now, if I gave birth to Jesus Christ too, maybe my life could be even better. But the odds are I won't. The odds are I'll give birth to the next carjacker. All right, so... All right, my second question is so like when you're like 80 plus you don't you, you you'll be fine being on your own? Well, because I'm not going to be any more on my own than anybody else. First of all, there's no guarantee your children will take care of you when you get old. Yeah, I'm definitely not looking for that. That's a terrible 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 uh, fail safe, but I mean, I'd still like to have someone I know what you'd like, but there's no guarantee you're going to get it. There's no guarantees in life, though. So. Yeah, but, but that, that's my point. You might put your whole heart and soul into having children, hoping they're going to be pushing you around with a drool cup when you get older, and then find out they're too busy for you. All right, yeah. I, I'm just completely upset with life right now because it, it seems it just pisses me off that there's nothing more than just... Why do you sense. care? You're 18. Why can't you just enjoy life? Oh, I definitely am. It's just that uh, I'm looking for new experiences. But why does your new experience have to be the same old experience? Meet some chick, go hand in hand to Ikea on Saturday morning shopping for credenzas, get married and go to Lamaze classes. This is not something new. You want the same old thing. Yeah, that, yeah that's true. You're not looking for anything new. Somebody who's looking for something new goes to another country, or they study something else uh, and major in it in college, or they uh, they create something that no one's ever created before. You want the same old crap. All right. Well, um, well, I, I love your show. Thanks for having me on. I mean, I've just started listening to a couple of weeks, and uh, I'll keep on tuning in. But uh, thanks for having me on. It'll start to make more sense the longer you listen. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm not right. trying to hurt your feelings here. I'm, I'm trying oh, no, to help no, you. No, I'm. De- I feel fine. Speaking with you logically, you seem logical. This is. This is great. All right. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate the call. Hmm. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Oscar, on the Tom like his show. Hello. Yo, how's it going? Nah, like I was telling, uh, like I was telling your boy. Um, I got my girl right. Uh, How old are you, girl? Oscar? Me, I'm nineteen. Why do you have a girlfriend? Why do I got a girlfriend? Because right. I messed up in high school. That's why. Yo, so you had a baby. Oh, no, no, thank God, not to this point. Well, but what do you mean you messed up in high school? What does that mean? Oh, I messed up, and I ended up hooking up, right? Well, you didn't have to and stay hooked up. You could have unhooked. Oh, yeah, you got a point there, man. Why didn't you do that? Because um, you got no game, you, you don't know how to meet chicks, and this one's already <laughs> there. Uh, Tell Tommy, the truth, you're Oscar. You're homie, Tell, the homie, truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You got no uh, goddamn game. Say it. All right, I, all right, I got no goddamn game. Right. So you had this chick there, and it was easier to subscribe to Time Magazine than to have to go down to the newsstand and buy it every week. <laughs> oh, man, Tom, you funny, man. It's true, though, isn't it? Yeah, Yo, you got a point. Hey, she's fine, though. She's fine. Fine, fine. But you know what? The price is too high. Yeah, the price is too high. You want to know something? A Lamborghini is fine. And you know what you do with a Lamborghini? You go to the dealer. You ask if you can take a test drive. You take it out on PCH. You open her up. Get all 600 horsepower in there. And then when you're done taking a good hard ride, you drive it back to the showroom and you say, do you have a card? I'll let you know. And that's what you do with chicks, you see? If they're really fine, you test drive them. You ride them over a few speed bumps. Then you bring them back to the dealer. All right, all right. But you can't do that. No, I can't do that because you got a point. I got no game. Right. All right, so now you're 19 and you've got a girlfriend because you've got no game. So what happened? Uh, nah, she's supposed to be taking her pills, right? She's, she's supposed to be taking her pills. Precisely. She's and you were, you, by the way, them. how long have you been a listener here, Oscar? Hold on, man. Me and my boys, we used to listen to you since we were back in 10th grade. Right. And what did I tell you about believing women who say they're on birth control? Oh, boy. Don't believe them. Didn't I say that? Yeah, you did say that. And you heard me say it. And I heard you say it, and I believed I believed her instead of what I messed up. Uh-huh. By the way, Oscar, I, I'm assuming that you are uh, Hispanic? Oh, yes, I am. Is your girlfriend Hispanic? Oh, yeah, she is. Have you ever met a Hispanic girl who used birth control? A uh, couple. For real? Did you yeah, see them using it? Yeah, I've seen it. Because I, I, da- I, <laughs> I date <laughs> women of Hispanic descent all the time. Haven't met one yet who uses birth control. What's up? I haven't met one yet who uses birth control. Oh, for real? For real. I must have kids everywhere, Tom. No, I use condoms 100% of the time. Oh, that's great. That's beautiful right there. But you don't, do you? I didn't. Mr. Bareback. <laughs> because you don't like the way it feels. Oh, man. You know, Tom, you know. You, you I hear this, it. Oscar, I hear this story all the time. So let me uh, press the fast forward button here, okay, just so we get to the next part of the story. Uh, so you believed her, she was taking the pill, and then whoops, somehow she forgot to take the pill. Or worse yet, she lied to you about taking the pill. So she says, uh, we got to talk, and you sit down and say, yeah, yeah, what is it, what is it? And then she tells you, oops, I forgot to take the pill. Whoops, I'm knocked up, and you're the father. <laughs> Am I right, Oscar? I don't know that yet, though. I don't know that yet, though. I don't know. She hasn't told me yet. You see, what do you mean she hasn't told you yet? I, I, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm, I've already done fast forward. We already know what, what's coming here. Tell me what you know so far. What I know so far, she took her cycle, and then they got them reminder pills, them sugar pills and whatnot. Now, she skipped that, but she didn't wait the week. She just jumped onto a new cycle. So that messes up the, the whole the whole purpose of it. Well, now she's not getting her period, and now 
we don't know if it's because she's pregnant or if it's because it's the pill actually working. Well, that's what she told you. Let's start with that. We don't know what she's doing. Yeah, we don't know what she is. She you... lied, then we don't know what's up. Because I will tell you this. Many women, when they get married, if they are concerned that their cycle is going to come up during their honeymoon, they have extra package pills, and they keep taking the real pills to delay their period. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, the... This would mean you can't get pregnant if she's actually doing that. But why did she do that? I don't know. That's what I told her. I told her on Friday not to do that. She didn't listen. But did, why? When you asked her why she did it, what did she say? She said that she knew what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. And by the way, if she was doing something funky like that, why didn't you break out the rubbers? Uh, because you're an idiot. Say it. <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Huh? Right. That's why. I'm an She's idiot. not going to get her period until she stops taking the real pills. All right. All right. Period. So I, got not, I got nothing to worry about. No, you don't know what she's doing. You only know what she told you. Okay. She, okay. Women are liars. Women are liars. Yes. Oh, well, liars. yes, but you still believe her because you don't want to use a rubber. No, I still believe her. I want to believe she's taking her pills. Well, I, I want to believe, believe Santa Claus is coming on December 24th. I want to believe that on Channel 9, Saturday night, I'm going to win the big spin. I want to believe that, okay? I want to believe that. Do you think that's going to happen? No, I don't think so, man. But I want to believe it. You want to believe it. You want to believe she's on the pill. Yeah, well, great. I want to believe the Easter Bunny is coming with a, a basket of eggs. <laughs> I want to believe the tooth fairy is going to give me five bucks for my last baby tooth. Hey, you still got a baby tooth? Don't be a brick. All right, I'm in outside. Nah, but yeah. So what's wrong, man? What do you suggest? <laughs> what do I suggest? Number one, you make her take a pregnancy test. One of those EPTs from the store. Get right. two of them. Make sure she uses them first thing in the morning. Get two different brands, two different results. After that, you use condoms 100% of the time. Stop being an idiot. Okay. I'm serious. I'm serious. Stop being an idiot. Sounds pretty reasonable. Right? Why would you ever believe what a chick says? Ever. Oh, you want an answer? I know the answer because you want to ride bareback. That's why. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. That 30 seconds of ejaculation, uh, do you, as good as it might be, would it be worth 18 years of payments? I don't know. Do you own a car? Do I own a car? Yeah. Yeah, I own a car. You own a car? Yeah. You have a car loan? Do I have a car loan? No, I don't got a car loan. Okay. If you bought a new car, how long would the car loan? If, if you bought a new car now. All right. How long would the car loan be for? Five years? Six years? About five years. Right, about five years? About 60 months? Yeah. Can you imagine like Can you imagine buying a car and paying for 180 months? Yeah. That would be, you know how many years that would be? That would only be 15 years. <laughs> how about 216 months? That sounds more like 18 years. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. Could, can you imagine paying for something for 216 months? Not really. Now imagine if it was 30 seconds of ejaculation. Would that be worth 216 months worth of payments? Oh, no, man. No, no, no. Well, that is what you are proposing to do here. All right. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. As good as it might feel, is it worth 216 months of payments? No way. Then you have to stop doing that. You got a point. Damn straight, I've got a point. Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. You're the biggest Latino I know, bro. <laughs> you, you like soccer, you would be a complete Latino. <laughs> but that's another top. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 
at one 800 800 talk And that is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. This hour all started with an email from a woman who said, oh, yes, her boyfriend is wonderful. He's just not ambitious or successful. And she just can't help wishing he was more interested in being successful and able to be there to give her advice, life advice, career advice, to be there to give her reassurance and empathy. It's like, maybe you're dating the wrong guy. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Grayson on the Tom Like Your Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you, Grayson. How are you? Do you care? Absolutely, brother. Doing great. Absolutely. I had a question for you, Tom. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's off the subject, but um, I'm, uh, I've been friends with this girl for about uh, eight, eight to ten years. Um, I knew her since high school. Um, we used to be, uh, we used to be, uh, you know, intimate. And um, over the years, she got married and had three kids. And uh, well, now she uh, she's coming back by around, and um, she's telling me she's got a divorce with her husband and everything. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. Um, do you think she's trying to? Reel me in to yes. take Yes. Yes. Absolutely, huh? And besides, why do you want to be with somebody who has three kids? Do you know how inconvenient that is? Sounds great when you first get the phone call. You're flattered that she remembered you. But in the real world, how are you ever going to get any time alone with somebody who has three kids? Yeah, I mean, it, I'm already, you know, helping out with the kids. Why? I, um... Just because she was a friend, you know, I just felt bad. That's not your job. I guess I'm kind of a pussy. <laughs> yes, you're beyond kind of. You went beyond the kind of a pussy stage a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, um, I just, I just need to, I just need a for sure, you know, for sure answer from her. If you know, I don't mind being her friend. I don't mind helping her out, but you know, I'm not into the relationship part of it. You know. <laughs> The bottom line here is it's not your job to help her take care of the kids. You can talk to her on the phone. You can give her advice. By the way, being friends with her takes away the time that, that you could be spending getting laid. Oh, yeah, Tom. Tell me about I it. I mean, have you forgotten your priorities? Um, yeah. You, you know what? I'm, I have this problem with that because I, I used to get, you know, quite a few Quite a few women, and I've I've been used to having you know threesomes and stuff with two other girls. No joke, you know. And so then, why are you me. wasting your valuable time uh, chit chatting with somebody who has three kids and helping her take care of her kids? Uh, I'm a pussy, I guess. <laughs> well, you're giving up your own life for that, and it, it's it's a shame. God, I just get so frustrated sometimes, you know. I mean. I tried, you know. I what is so frustrating? I just try to get in relationships, and I always end up. Why do you need a relationship? Just get laid. <laughs> I've been following your steps, Tom, for a long time. Well, you're following my about, stuff. You are not looking for a relationship. You're looking for poon. <laughs> yeah, ten four. <laughs> Let me ask I, you a question. Yeah. When you stop at the Chevron station to use the men's room, do you have a relationship with the urinal? No. No. You relieve yourself and you get the hell out of there. So you think I should be spending more time on caring about my own penis then? <laughs> well, what, you caring about her penis? <laughs> I'm not sure if that much has changed over the years. So. I mean, listen carefully. If you don't fall in love with the urinal, why are you having a relationship with her? Oh, right now. The purpose know, of a woman is to make a drop off and then move on. <laughs> so you think it's kind of dangerous for me to just even be friends with her for right now? <laughs> why do you need to see her? I just, um, I don't know. I guess, uh, you know, I see someone who needs help. I've always helped my friends. That, that, the years. point is, you your needs are not being taken care of. 
Absolutely not. Well, yeah, uh, you not you area. can't help others until you have helped yourself. So I should wash my hands clean of this situation? Though? Yes. You are not a babysitter, period. You're not there to help her take care of children. Where's the father? Um, the father, he's uh, he wants back in the relationship with her, you know? But she keeps uh, fighting it tooth and nail. She doesn't want to be with him. And, you know, I... I Definitely, you know. Well, he has a right, system. and uh, he has a right uh, to uh, take on the responsibilities of being a parent. Yeah, I think he should. I end up watching the kids most of the time. What are you doing watching the kids? I'm a soccer, Tom. I mean, you know, someone asked me for help. I'm always there. You are know, you kidding happen. me? The last time I watched somebody's kid, she was a 10. <laughs> and when she came home, she sat on me and rode me like a pony. That's the only... Hey, hey, watch your mouth. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Tom. I'm sorry. You don't... Uh, you absolutely do not babysit for children. You don't do it. See, and that's what I'm thinking. She says she just wants to keep it platonic, just be friends. But I'll I'm, bet I'm she does. Sure I'll bet you know? that... No! <laughs> I'll bet that's exactly what she wants. She wants free babysitting services... At some point, she'll want money if she hasn't asked for it already. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not yet, <laughs> huh? Well, that's... I don't go down the financial route. Well, that is coming. If she hasn't asked already, it's coming. Oh, no. Oh, man. She's got three kids and no boyfriend. She needs money. Trust me. By the way, if she didn't need money, she wouldn't need free babysitting services. You got a point. So next, she's going to ask you for money. Oh, man, I, ca I can't do that. That's can't what's coming, that. and you are putting yourself in that position. Because, you know, I got my own life. To no, live. you don't. You're now a babysitter with a oh. woman who has a platonic relationship with you. By the way, while you're babysitting, she's probably looking for the next sucker. Oh. What is she doing with your babysitting? Um, well, usually she's out looking for work and um, taking care of uh, her situation. You know, what what does she do at night? Uh, she goes to school. She's, uh, she does hair. Oh, she does hair. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so she doesn't ever meet any men out there? Um, I, You know, she's got one, one friend there who's a guy, but you know how hairdresser guys are, so. But. Don't you know, assume that. I guess I can't really dismiss it. No, you can't. Man. Well, what do you think I should do? How should I break it to her? Hey, don't worry about it. Who cares? You tell her that you have been neglecting your own life and that you've got to get back to your life. You're right, Tom. She wants a babysitter. You go to Craigslist or the Recycler or somewhere like that. <laughs> Craigslist. That's right. Yeah, I use Craigslist for other things. <laughs> uh, that's right. You go to Craigslist. I, well, what do you care where she gets a babysitter? That's her problem, not yours. Yeah, I, I guess I just feel like it's resp like a responsibility of mine. It is not your responsibility. These children have a father. Yeah, they do. I don't know where the hell he's at. He wants to be involved. You just told me. Yeah, but he's never around. He never he, because she kids. doesn't want him around, remember? Yeah, he wants to be involved with her, you know? Fine. This is the, fine. That's their soap opera, not yours. Yeah, that's what's happening. I'm this stuff is none of it. your business. None of your business. Back out of the driveway. Nah, you're totally right, Tom. You're totally right. Hey, man, I appreciate your advice, Tom. Long time listener, man. Can uh, you take me out with the bong here, buddy? I barely can. Here you go. Tom Likas Show.